Hey everyone, this is part two of Does Size Matter? Now, so now if you remember last week, we were talking about the carat weight versus the millimeter size of a gemstone, okay? So this week specifically, we'll be going over the carats versus the clarity grade. So what is the clarity grade? So what is clarity? Well, first and foremost, clarity is actually a gemstone grade, okay? So basically what it grades are the inclusions or imperfections of a gemstone. So it could be a moissanite, a diamond, a lab grade, or a natural because inclusions do exist as well as imperfections do exist in lab created gemstones as well, all right? Uh, so what are these inclusions and what are these imperfections? Well, uh, basically there are minerals or just imperfections or blemishes inside or outside of a gemstone that basically does not make it a perfectly flawless stone from the outside or inside. And most gemstones, lab or natural, are, uh, do have some inclusions. Most are actually not flawless, okay? So uh, let me go ahead and go over the grades. So the, the, if you are to be able to find a flawless stone, uh, basically the uh, letter grade is an F, okay? So uh, internally flawless is the next step down, which is an, uh, the letters to describe as an IF, okay? You'll see these on grading reports, right? So regardless if it's GIA, PGGL, or any other grading report, uh, if they are grading a clarity grade, that's what you'll see, all right? So uh, the next step down after that is very, very slightly included. And there are two tiers uh, for this specific grade. It's called the VVS1 and a VVS2. So VVS2 is just slightly below a VVS1, all right? So the same for a very slightly included. There's a VS1 and a VS2. And then slightly included, which is an SI1 and an SI2. And then last, uh, but not least is included, which is an I1, I2, or an I3, all right? So for the most part, not always, but for the most part, between a very slightly included clarity grade to a flawless grade, it's considered eye clean. Basically what that means is that unless you're not putting under a microscope or looking through a jeweler's loop, you're looking with just your naked eyes, all right? Uh, basically, it should look very clean. You shouldn't be able to see the inclusions because these inclusions, again, at the end of the day, gemstones are, you know, small, right? They're measured in millimeters, so uh, the inclusions are just specks. I mean, they're very, very tiny, and you can barely see it, right? So uh, if it's slightly included to include it, uh, then that's where you'll be able to notice it a bit more. The imperfections are a little louder. Uh, you know, the inclusions are more visually there, right? So, and usually they call it salt and pepper, and a lot of people actually like the slightly included as well as the very included gemstones as well because of the salt and pepper look. So it just depends on your taste, right? Uh, there's no real right or wrong answer here. It's just we're explaining the clarity grade uh, from uh, include, very heavily included uh, to basically a flawless stone. All right, so here's a visual of uh, you know, what these inclusions actually mean, all right? So obviously the, in nature and even in a lab, these are very, um, you know, the way inclusions and, imperfection, and imperfections are inside of a gemstone, uh, it's very chaotic, right? So there's really no set formula as to where the inclusions are. Uh, we will have to actually identify it by looking through a jeweler's loop or microscope and actually, or get, send it to a lab to get it graded for them to identify where these inclusions are. But this is just a sample as to what they may look like, right? So uh, for example, a flawless stone, uh, if it's just a round shaped stone, it's flawless. So you won't be able to see any inclusions. Internally flawless basically means that inside of the gemstone, it's completely clear. Uh, there aren't any imperfections or any inclusions at all whatsoever, but there may be a little blemish on the outside of the surface. That's called an internally flawless stone, all right? Uh, a VVS1 or VVS2 may have very slight minimal, minuscule inclusions that uh, can barely be seen, okay? And usually it's a, of a, a whiter color rather than a darker color because it's barely noticeable, all right? So uh, it's a VVS1 and a VVS2. Now, if it's a VS1 and a VS2, then it's similar to a VVS1 and a VS2, but uh, there are a few more inclusions, maybe in more noticeable areas, such as the center of the stone, all right? Uh, so that would be considered a VS1 or a VS2. Now, with the, um, uh, the stones that are a little more salt and pepper like the SI1, SI2, uh, and you know, even SIs, uh, SI1s and SI2s, they're not very salt and pepper. It's really the, the heavily included stones are very salt and pepper. SI1s and 2s are a little more noticeable if you actually really try to look into it, but it's still 
Mm. Very eye clean, especially when you're referring to melis, because melis are, if you're referring back to my episode when I was talking about melis or accent gemstones uh, that are used in diamonds or in, in jewelry to accent the jewelry, uh, they're so small they can barely see any inclusions, even if it's an SI1 or 2, all right? So uh, uh, even though an SI1 or 2 is considered lower end of the uh, clarity grade, for melis specifically, it's actually very high. Uh, towards because at the end of the day, the mellies are so small that you can barely see it. Uh, but with that being said, an SI1 and SI2, uh, you know, obviously they're peppered around a little bit more in terms of where the inclusions are, and then the heavily included stone, I1, I2, I3, you can definitely see it with the naked eye. Uh, when it's completely noticeable, that's the, um, you know, the word that you want to use, and you can actually notice it just by looking at it with the naked eye, then it's uh, basically it's an included stone, right? So if you see a lot of dark spots, you see some uh, heavily uh, imperfections of blemishes, uh, you know, if you see some natural uh, imperfections on the surface inside of the gemstones, then it's typically a heavily included gemstone. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on to uh, the next big thing, which is what most people actually care about. How does this affect uh, the price? You know, in general, the higher the carat or the more weight, the heavier a stone is, uh, the pricier uh, a gemstone is, right? Uh, and then the higher the clarity grade, so as it, as it moves up, in terms of the clarity grade, from included to slightly included to very slightly included to very very slightly included, slightly included to internally flawless to flawless, uh, the price will move up quite a bit. All right. Uh, so the price in general is affected by the higher the weight and the higher the clarity grade. If we are comparing carrots versus the clarity, so now if you do have a budget, the question is, what do I choose? Do I choose a heavier stone? Or do I choose a higher quality or high clarity stone? All right, so it just depends on what you like. Like I said, again, a lot of people prefer uh, a gemstone that is that has a salt and pepper look. Okay, so th that might not be extremely important to them. But if it's very important to actually pick a flawless stone, or internally flawless stone, or a very eye clean stone, if that's important to you, uh, then you may want to weigh out your options between a higher clarity stone uh, versus a higher carat weight stone and kind of meet in the middle. So maybe instead of going with a two carat, flawless or a two carat heavily included stone, you may want to go with a one and a half carat uh, VS1. That might be the better option if you want to meet right in the middle. That's what most people will do. They want to have a nice enough size, but at the same time have a, a beautiful clarity grade so that it's not so heavily included that's extremely noticeable. Okay, so, uh, so that's how it affects your budget. Uh, the more carrots versus the higher clarity grade, that's up to you. Again, some people like heavily included stones. Some people do not like heavily included stones, and therefore they have to meet in the middle. So with that being said, if you ever are given the opportunity to start making your own jewelry and you have to decide between one gemstone over the other. Hopefully I was able to provide enough detail, enough value in terms of information uh, that you may uh, hopefully potentially consider uh, so that uh, when you do make this purchase, you can really weigh out your options. Those are the options. How do I decipher it? How do I evaluate it? How do I analyze it? What's more beneficial to me? What hurts my pocketbook? What doesn't hurt my pocketbook? But what is my budget? What is my price? What is the clarity grade? What is the carrot weight? All right, so uh, with that being said, if, if there's anything else that you wanna learn, definitely leave a comment below, hit the like button, and subscribe to the channel um, and we will definitely uh, see what we can do especially if you leave a comment let us know uh, what you want to learn more we do create a list here as to what uh, what items uh, that we will potentially go over in the future and so we may potentially make a video just for you okay so uh, again thank you for tuning in I'll see you again next time goodbye <laughs>